we are often asked how we uh, determine how to decorate our store and how to place our antiques. And because we've traveled to many major antique stores around the um, United States, we always come home with lots of good ideas. And so we try to make our antiques look at how they would look if they were in your home. So if something needs to be hung, we hang it on the wall. If something needs to be placed uh, in a bowl, we place something in the bowl. And we've learned over the years how to layer things and how to um, use a lot of texture in our decorating. We might have wools mixed with uh, wire and we might have wood mixed with glass. So the textures are interesting for our customers to look at. Well, you know, I really like this type of a business. I've had a career before. I enjoyed my career when I was doing it. I, I, I used to be a nurse. I got out of nursing to become an antique dealer. And you know, as time has gone by, I have just really enjoyed it more and more. It's not a hobby for me. It's not just a hobby. I enjoy it, so I guess it's a hobby and maybe it has to be a hobby because I don't make a lot of money doing it but I just am not ready to quit right now there is just I know there are more things out there that I will find and when I find them I will get so excited when I find it and I want somebody else to be excited about it too The primary reason for getting into this business was first a desire to leave the job that I was in before and secondly uh, I've always had a dream to take advantage of the freedoms and the liberty we have here in America to be able to have a business and enjoy working on my own. Thirdly was our family, it was a desire for our children to be involved and to see what types of things are important in establishing a business and as an outlet for the artistic talents that some of our family has so they could sell their work through the shop here and we have artwork in different places that you can look at. My husband and I have been married about 45 years and we probably got interested in the antique business because when we were first married our possessions were very sparse and um, we got most of them off the back porch of our parents home. So we fell in love with old things from the very beginning and that is how our interest in the antique world actually began. So we began furnishing our home with old pieces of furniture and family pieces and we grew to love them very much and that's how eventually I ended up becoming an antique dealer.
sister and I inherited it. And then with my son joining us, we come here to Grand Island in 1986 and opened the Heartland Antique Mall, which we started down in the Gar Building, which is east of this present site by about two blocks. Then we moved to this place It became available. We started out at the Gar Building with 14 dealers, moved to, we kept those 14 dealers until we moved to this present site and we now have 37 dealers. About 10 of the dealers are the original ones from 1986. Also back in 86 when we started over here, the so many of the shops in the area were single shops, but it was just starting the trend going to malls because single shops just could not survive. So the idea of the malls renting out spaces to different dealers brought in a bigger variety of antiques. <laughs> The United States is a country that has developed so quickly and um, in an industrial way. Um, the first migrant immigrants from from Europe arrived here and very quickly began to inhabit an entire continent. And the pace of change, the pace of development has been so fast that it causes displacement, um, dehumanization, because we need to maintain contact with the um, continuous past with our roots. Americans have collected antiques, I think in resistance to that, to that dehumanizing force of, of rapidity. And um, so um, often I think Americans collect things that they recognize are going away. sleigh is of particular interest because of J.P. Morgan's personal sleigh. He had this sleigh on his Camp Uncas in Inlet, New York, and it was purchased by him personally in 1891. And in 1913, the Vanderbilts bought the Camp Uncas, and along with Camp Uncas come this sleigh. Eight years ago, I found this sleigh on eBay and bought it from her personally. She was one of the Vanderbilt granddaughters and she was just selling off some of the assets from her inheritance and this was part of it. So we met him uh, halfway out across the country, met her son, she brought it out and uh, we put it on her porch. This was just an old bathtub, an old cast iron bathtub early from, from the late 1800s, early 1900s. We found it in an alley. It was all chipped up and, and the porcelain was basically destroyed on it. We had it restored and brought it up here and set it up and uh, my wife and kids, they like to soak in it, it works real well.
clubs in town, Island Area Cruisers and the Vintage and Classic Wheels, and we have a cruise night every Friday night at a different restaurant here in town. just a bunch of friends getting together and we just come out and have a good time and visit because we like to drive our old cars and show them off to the public. They come out and look at them and we, we just do it for the fun of it just to have a good time and, and to show them off a little bit. Be merciful unto us and bless us and, and cause thy face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. And thank you, Lord, for safely bringing Jim to our home. Amen. 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 One year, uh, oh, I don't know, my daughter is now 23, so when she was probably around seven years old, eight years old, um, they, the movie people came to the Midwest, came to right here in Grand Island, Nebraska, and they filmed uh, My Antonia. And they were, they had a call, a cast call, so we all went down to see if we could get into the movies. It was a very exciting time for us. They also went around town to the different antique stores and they were picking up vintage and antique items to be filmed in this movie because it was a movie, you know, that was probably from around 1910 through 1920 and it was, you know, on the prairie, it was about a pioneer family. We were just sort of always wondering who was going to come in next and buy something that they were going to take into the movies and, and we were going to look for it on the film. Well, my daughter and I both were selected to be in this movie, had a very small part. Uh, my part was a very quick little blip <laughs> and you have to look fast. Uh, but my daughter was in it and uh, her part is a little bit longer and even though you can't really see her face so much, we know that that's her and we really have enjoyed that film for that reason. It's probably true that Americans collect antiques in a, in a way that's different from other people in the world. and, and um, it's, it doesn't surprise me that Americans like things that might not even be considered valuable. They just simply are some connection to the to what was before. Andy Warhol and others, I think, found beauty in in the most common things. 
um, Andy Warhol calls on us to look again at the shelf of the grocery store that has a row of Campbell's soup cans and, and for him this was, was a thing of beauty. So it's partly about recognizing the beauty in common things. I've been the manager here at, at this store since January. Um, I've been in this business for, for quite some time now um, and I really enjoy working with people um, and the atmosphere uh, that, that coffee brings to people. Um, we've got a wide variety of people who, who frequent our store, um, ages, you know, usually usually in between 20 to about, you know, 88. Um, it kind of varies on a day-to-day -day basis. But everyone likes to come down and, and see the architecture of the building and, and, and revisit memories from when this building was the Grand Island Candy Cafe. Lots of people ask us where we get the inventory for our store and that has changed over the years. In the beginning we used to go to... Since we get things from a variety of places. Uh, with regards to where we find our merchandise, I think... <laughs> Antique auctions, such as auctions. Auctions. Garage sale. Garage sales. interesting part about owning a shop is that some people actually walk in your front door and have things to sell you. So that has been an unexpected way to 
add inventory to our store. Other times individuals will come to us with an estate and some of the family. The individual dealers bring in their stuff, they price it, and we sell it for them. We collect the money and then they clean their merchandise or their booth area. They, are re they refill it, shift merchandise around to keep it fresh. And people bringing in, you know, items to sell from their family. A lot of times those folks think that they have an antique and that it has been around for a long time. And when in fact that it is actually something uh, newer and then we have to say, no, I'm sorry, this isn't, this isn't as old as you think it is. The Grand Theater was built and opened May 7th, 1937. Wally Kemp was the manager and he managed for about 50 years. In the late 1980s, he retired, and, and then another company came along and bought it, did some remodeling and painting, and they ran it for about 12 years. After the mall, out at the Conestoga Mall, uh, had about 14 theater screens built in there, this place closed down. Those owners decided to give it to a nonprofit so they could take it off their income taxes. So. A group of us business people downtown formed a group called the Grand Foundation. The owners gave us the theater and we've been running it on an all-volunteer basis for the last six years. The Grand Foundation just recently completed an $830,000 capital campaign. We went over our goal to $890,000. The capital campaign is to restore the facade with all the, the heavy plate colorful glass on the front, new carpeting, new projection system, and a new concession area. And all of this was done, we started with $250,000 of our own money, and the rest of the money came from donations and grants from other places. And we feel very successful in our endeavor to, to preserve the Grand Theater as Wally would have had it and we're really proud to be a part of something this big in Grand Island. The architecture is a combination of Art Deco and Streamline Modern. Wally Kemp, having been the manager and eventual owner for 50 years, always loved the theater just as it was and insisted that there be no major changes to the theater itself. At one time, the front of the theater was covered in a very th thick, heavy plate glass in the 1970s, it started falling off, so they did remove that and put up a stucco facade. Uh, we, as the Grand Foundation, are in the process of getting that glass replaced, so it'll be a very colorful, very shiny facade. And the people of Grand Island really appreciate what we're doing. Dancing and singing in the rain. look at something and I handle it and it's old and I, I look to see how it's put together and you know and imagine who might have worn it and what their lives must have been like when they were wearing it or using this object at the time they were living. Um, it just it just really excites me. transitory nature of life in general. People come and go in this world. We use things in the world while we're here and when we leave this world we leave 
stuff behind and so as people die and move on they have goods and antiques collectible things that other people might enjoy while they have their time in this world George Bartenbach, my great-great-grandfather, came to Grand Island around 1876. He was an immigrant from Tutling in Germany. He, and uh, Grand Island was primarily a German community, and so it was a, like a large family at that time. And so it took them a year and a half to build this building. And when it was done, it had six main businesses on the ground floor, just as it is today. They've expanded a little bit today, but there's still six storefronts. And there was the upstairs, which they made into the Barton Back Opera House. And Grand Island was in a perfect place to travel to for the uh, traveling shows, because it was halfway between Denver and Chicago. So there was a lot of bookings back there, and, and uh, my great-great-grandfather George did that for some times, but ultimately Henry, his son, took over the running of most of the Opera House. The Opera House lasted from about 1880 until 1940, and primarily what put most Opera Houses out of business were the uh, uh, movies, movie theaters, and uh, when they started having more theaters for talking movies uh, in the latter years of the Opera House, they had uh, a lot of boxing matches, high school graduations. They had a lot of functions here, but it wasn't the main entertainment that it had been in the in years before that. After the Opera House was closed, then, then this, it was remodeled upstairs, and so there's literally nothing left of the Opera House there any longer, and so I, I never was able to see it other in, than in pictures. And so I have a, probably one of the last remaining visual pictures of, of the Opera House. And I have been in the business this long because I love history, I love old stuff, the memories it brings back to me and it's just seeing people walk through this store. One of the things we hear very often from our customers in the store is, oh, do you remember when grandma used that? Or, oh, my grandma had one of these. Or, do you remember we had that when we were on the farm? I grew up with one of these. And people are so nice. There's nobody nicer than a person that loves antiques people enjoy coming to an antique store even though they're perhaps not going to purchase anything but they just like that trip down memory lane. History is important. Without it we could not have the present time. So whatever is happening now will be the past as the future comes around. Whatever we do today and whatever things we create today will enable us to have better things maybe in our future. So the history of every culture is important. It is the people who lived before us and the things that they did before us that make our lives better today or, or make things the way they are, the inventions and, and a lot of things the way they are today. So we, we really have to strive to keep our history intact and pass it along to our generations, our future generations. Mm -hmm.